Hello geographers, this is a geography talk through of a resource analysis question. This question comes from the hazard section of the 2017 AS paper. So aims for today um, to develop, analyze exam technique and to review an example question with a model answer. So just to go back through structure as always, so to confirm this is an analyze question. It is included in all sections, so there'll be one in section A, B and C. It's worth six marks and it is entirely AO3. So the set rules for that means we need to address the AO3 element, which is the ability to interpret, to analyze graphs um, and to essentially describe in lots of detail. So this type of resource analyze question is the one highlighted in bold. It's a leveled six mark question. Uh, there could be, you could come across a six mark analyze question that requires you to complete the resource, uh, which is then marked in a different way. So the four rules for this type of question that will help you with your answer. Number one, don't go beyond the resource and I'll show you some examiner's feedback to really confirm that to you. And then on to describing the general trend, if possible, including a range and use of averages. Make sure you analyze all quantitative and qualitative data. That might be comparisons of different graphs or pictures to graphs, something like that. If possible, manipulating data and certainly making connections between the two. And then, if possible, some sort of critique. So that might be picking out anomalies, or it might be possibly um, talking about limitations of the technique that's been used. So let's have a look at this specific question. So as you can see from reading the question, the two line graphs that are included on this one graph um, show the relationship between precipitation and the area affected by wildfire in a given year in the United States of America. So the red line is showing the area affected by wildfire. Really importantly, it's using this scale, this y-axis on the left, whereas the blue line is showing precipitation, which again is showing on this y-axis on the right. Be aware that the scales are very different there's a break in the scale here going from 0 straight to 11. The other thing that's really important to note is we should be looking at the precipitation and the wildfire in comparison to the mean area across this time period. So for wildfire it's the dotted line here which puts the mean at approximately 100,000 acres whereas for precipitation it's around 15 inches per year. So initially, it's quite complex to look at this line graph in relation to the mean, and there's lots of data on one graph. So to show you it broken down, so we can start to work out what is the relationship. It might be easier to consider them as two separate graphs. So the graph at the top showing precipitation, and clearly when the line graph is above the dotted line, that means there's above average rainfall. When it's below, there's below average rainfall and exactly the same for wildfire. So to pick out some of the most obvious relationships here that we might expect is that in 2006, there's below average rainfall. It's approximately 13 inches throughout the year, as opposed to the mean that's 15. And the area affected by wildfire is above average. It's about twice the average. So there's certainly one thing we could be talking about in our answer. We see exactly the same thing happening in 2012. It's a little bit more extreme, nice relationship. So the precipitation is much lower than the average and the wildfire extent is about three and a half times higher than the average area that's affected in a year. A really strong relationship that's telling us years of limited rainfall equal higher rates of wildfire. It might be worth pointing out now that there's a, a really useful anomaly for us to talk about, and that's here. So in 2011, um, that's our year with our highest rainfall. 
in our highest rainfall we might then expect if this relationship is true for there to be a very low area affected in terms of wildfire but that's not actually true at all the area affected by wildfire is above the average so there are some of the key points that are a little bit more obvious when we separate the graphs out um, but ultimately these are our key areas we might like to discuss so in terms of general trend the general trend here it appears that high precipitation leads to a smaller area affected and vice versa there's a high level of fluctuation and variability throughout the different years when we're looking at precipitation and looking at wildfire if we want to start picking values out which we should and um, we can see that the area affected ranges from close to zero um, all the way up to 350,000 acres and the rainfall is above average for more years than than the wildfires were if we're looking to make comparisons which we should be which is part of our green rule so we're looking at comparisons between the two line graphs the key things that we pointed out in that previous slide was that where rainfall is below average wildfire appears to be above average the big anomaly that we talked about was in 2011 so that's going to form part of my purple critique uh, the other thing that I think is worth noting is there appears to be a return period it appears that every four to six years we have one of these years with high wildfires and low rainfall which we'll come back to a little bit later um, in terms of a critique of the presentation technique itself if you want to include this it's my opinion that it'd be a good idea uh, you could consider that um, annual precipitation maybe isn't the best measure to consider whether wildfires are going to occur or not it might be that that precipitation comes all in one season and therefore it's drier in the, in the summer and therefore more wildfires are expected it might be that precipitations averaged out in even measures throughout the year which might therefore lead to less prevalence of wildfires so maybe considering rainfall in the dry season might be a, a much more useful element of the data that we could consider so before I show you a model answer I just want to show you the examiner's feedback for this question in 2007 and this keeps coming back to this blue area of not going beyond the resource so first thing to note is average mark for this question is approximately half so this is a really good question where there's marks to be gained uh, with good technique but the thing that's most important I think to take away from this is the blue bit at the bottom says that some candidates drifted into the cause of forest fire or the reasons why rain reduces incidence so that'd be a very tempting thing to do and um, equally when we're talking about this return period we could link that to something like El Nino and we might consider that our answers can be valued very highly for being smart geographers but in reality um, the examiner would deem this to be AO2 application of knowledge and they would not be giving any credit for it they've said that very clearly in their examiner's feedback so we need to remember that for a six mark analyze question we don't go beyond the resource and that's a really important rule so let's put all of this into an answer uh, the mark schemes on the left you can see lots of information that you could include so feel free to pause this video have a read through uh, what's been written down and consider um, where it might be meeting some of those level two uh, criteria so the answer presented on the right um, i've color coded it to meet the general rules that we've talked about throughout this video and throughout others for this type of question um, if I read through it hopefully it will pick out some of the key elements that allow it to be a clear answer so here we go the two line graphs show the general trend that in periods of lower than average precipitation there is above average area affected by wildfire general trend into comparison and making connections this occurs in 2006 when rainfall is two inches below the mean and wildfire affected is twice the mean 
It also occurs in 2013, where the lowest rainfall of 11 inches results in the highest area affected of 350,000 acres. This appears to have a reoccurrence period of four to six years, as it happens in 2002, 2006 and 2012. So this section is meant to show me engaging with the two line graphs together and the average lines and understanding that there's a little bit more complexity in that relationship using specific values to make my point. So back to the general trend. The line graphs show that both precipitation and wildfire extent are highly variable over the 11 year period. For example, the area affected ranges from near zero to 350,000 acres. This is an opportunity of me being able to show the examiner that I understand the use of basic statistics in understanding ranges of data and variability of data. Onto the purple section, a anomaly. An anomaly that doesn't fit this relationship is 2011, where the highest rainfall uh, recorded results in uh, above average area affected. A criticism of the presentation method is that it uses total precipitation, whereas it might be more relevant to consider seasonal rainfall when considering its link to wildfires. So upon reflection and, and reading through my answer, as always, is it perfect? Possibly not. Um, I could have used a little bit more data. So for example, down here in 2011, where the highest rainfall could be stating a value of the highest rainfall. I could use a little bit more information. However, it certainly is a very solid answer that is going to meet the top level criteria. And that's my intention of these videos, isn't to present you with a answer that's been carefully crafted over an hour, but more an answer that's been written in near to exam conditions for you to see what's achievable. It certainly is a strong answer for elements of improvement for for all students to work on. Thank you very much.